Hey guys, this is the fifth C Sharp tutorial in the series, and in this tutorial, we'll be looking at switch statements. And if you watched the previous tutorial, switch statements are very similar to if statements. So, here, let's get started. We're going to click Create Project, and make sure you have Windows Form Application selected, and you can name it whatever you want, and then just click OK. So once the form is loaded, you're going to want to add a text box and a button to the main form and then once you have done that double click on the button and you should get this now what you're going to want to do is type in switch and inside the parentheses like you have on most statements you're going to want to type um, text box one dot text and then with Swiss statements, you do need French curly braces. So put two French curly braces down, and like so, and have like a cursor inside the two. And now what you're going to want to do is pre uh, type case, and then put two quotes like this, and a colon. So, oops. So what this will do is, um, it's going to switch Textbox 1's text. So, or well, not switch it, but like, it's it's like an if statement. So if text box one text is whatever we have in this case statement thing right here, um, it will do the code after the colon. So let's just say it's Adam, and then after the colon, we're going to put something. And oh, by the way, you have to make a new line. Um, we're going to put the code that you want it to do. I'll just have it say a message box. Dot show. And then I'll just have um, the text box um, is Adam. And then just fin finish it off like so. And then after every case statement part right here, you're going to want to type break. And what this will do is it will, like, once it checks this, and if this is true, then it will just break out of the switch statement and go to code below after the switch statement or whatever. So now we're going to want to create another case statement. Oh, oops. Put a bunch of spaces there. And type case again. And we'll try, we'll do another one. I guess I'll just type espionage. Another quote, put a colon, message box, dot show. Put a quote, the text box is espionage and then put another break in there all right so now when we debug if we put Adam in the text box and click the button say the text box is Adam if we make the text box say espionage, oops, there we go, click the button, text box is espionage. If we do anything else, we won't get anything, just nothing out of the button. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a default. Uh, oops. Default. So the default is going to be <clears throat> whatever, well, I guess, wait, I've seen a colon there. You're going to want to make it be anything. So I'll just have a message box dot show, and it's just going to say, "You do not have a face. Um, you do not have a. You do not have the passcode. All right, and then break." Alright, so here, now when we debug, if we do anything but espionage or, oops, if we do anything besides espionage or Adam, <coughs> it will give us, you do not have the passcode. Alright, so that is it for <coughs> tutorial 5 on switch statements. If you have any questions, just make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below. And I'll do my best to answer your question. Um, oh, and by the way, you can like change this up in here. It doesn't always have to be something string-oriented. It could be dot 
um, I don't know, like dot tag or anything like that. It doesn't have to be text. So just so you know. Alright, so in the next tutorial, I'm thinking I'm just going to go through these tutorials with like different statements. So I think the next tutorial, I'll be doing four statements. So yeah, see you next time.